Hi, and welcome to the Martin France Drums interface walkthrough. We'll start on the performance page. Up in the top left of the performance page are the preset menus. This is where you can make fast and radical changes to the sound of the instrument with just a few simple menu clicks. Preset controls are broken down into three elements. We have a preset type menu, we have a preset menu, and an apply button that puts the currently selected preset into effect. The different types are default sets, designed kits, and reset functions. The default set contains different kinds of drums, and when talking about drums here, we are referring specifically to the bass drum, snare, and the three toms. These default sets don't change cymbals, but instead change only the drums. In these default sets, we've got four different kits, as well as the option of just changing between the three tom sets. These kits are going to change the bass, snare, and toms to the type indicated. In this example, I want to load the club custom kit. So I select it on this menu and then hit apply. We can see the bass drum, snare and toms all change to the club custom kit type while the cymbals remain the same. If I want to keep the bass drum and snare from the club custom kit but use the toms from another kit that's where the final three entries in this menu are useful. If I choose the sonar light toms and hit apply, I've now got the three sonar light toms, but I've still got my bass drum and snare drum from the kit I originally loaded, and again my cymbals remain the same. This is a really easy way to check out the different kits in their raw state and hear how the different pieces work with each other. The design kits are more radical in that they will affect everything on the performance page. Not just drums, but cymbals as well as the mixing controls. We've designed a number of these for different musical styles, like classic jazz, classic rock, or more experimental styles like Glitch Kit, which is heavily processed, or Thunderstorm, which sounds really huge. Loading one of these changes everything on the screen, as you can see. The drums have changed, as well as the microphone controls and the cymbals. Finally, we have the third type of preset, the reset functions. If we select that type, we can see that the preset menu now contains different entries. The first of these is perhaps the one you will use most often, Reset Kit. When clicked, that takes us straight back to the default state of Martin France drums. All drums, cymbals and mixing controls are reset to their default state. The MIDI note map, however, remains as it is. We've also got a number of useful reset functions that are specific to microphones and to tuning. So we can use these to rapidly change the decay, or we can choose to hear only a specific set of microphones, as well as affecting the tuning globally. Finally, we've got some utilities at the end to reset the MIDI note assignments of the different parts of the kit, and also the volumes at which they play. By default, if you do something like Reset Kit, it doesn't reset the MIDI note assignments, because that would be really annoying. The idea is that when you use Reset Kit, your MIDI assignments will stay the same until you specifically choose to reset MIDI. We tried throughout to design Martin France drums in a way that is most useful to people using pads or an electronic kit, as well as keyboards. You'll see how that works particularly well with the soundcheck mode shown later in this video. So, let's come back to our default sets. We've got the Sonalite kit loaded, Let's look at a way of going in more detail with individual parts of this kit, changing the instrument that's loaded, and then tweaking the mix controls 
independently of the other parts of the kit. Let's look at the kit piece menu over here. Currently, the bass drum is selected. So this kit piece menu shows us the available bass drums we can load into this slot. When we choose one of these, it will load immediately. There's no apply button here. The change is instantaneous. For instance, if I choose the Gretsch 22 inch bass drum, it's loaded straight away. If I choose the 24 inch bass drum, that's loaded straight away too. So that's changing the kit piece that is loaded into the bass drum slot of the kit. But what we're also able to do is make some very fine grained adjustments to the sound of the bass drum, no matter which drum is selected here. If we click on the bass drum, then this part of the screen shows the controls that are specific to the bass drum slot. It's got one articulation, and this dial determines the volume of this articulation, which we can change plus or minus 12 dB. The second dial determines the MIDI note to which it's assigned, so you can turn that dial and change the MIDI note that triggers the bass drum. If we click the Learn button, the instrument will wait for me to play a note, and when you do, it will then set the MIDI note assignment for that drum to the one I just played on my controller. Keep in mind that what we're talking about here applies to whichever bass drum is loaded. So if I now, having set that assignment to C4, want to load the Sonolite bass drum here, it's changing the sound of the bass drum, but it's not changing these dials. They affect the bass drum slot, not the bass drums individually. The bass drum itself is assigned to whatever you've set here, and the sound is determined by the kit piece you've chosen here in the kit piece selection menu. Moving over to the other side of the interface, but still looking at controls that are specific to the bass drum, we can see the tuning dial, which can tune the bass drum up and down. Over here are some microphone controls. If we want to dry up the bass drum and make it tighter, we would first want to turn down the room mics. We might want to turn the close mics up, and then maybe we want to set the overheads to around there. We can also determine the decay of each mic from this specific drum. So we might want to reduce the decay on the overhead mics for the bass drum in particular. Say we did want some room mic for the bass drum, but we don't want it to ring out for a long time. We could shorten that decay, giving us great control over the sound of the bass drum in particular. Of course we can do this to every single instrument in the kit. Each instrument has its own dedicated set of controls. Let's select the snare. To do this, I simply click on the image of the snare. And now we can see that the interface has changed again. This menu has changed because it is now showing us the available snare drums. And this section has also changed because it is showing us the available snare articulations. We only had one for the bass drum, but we've got three for the snare, snare center, snare rim shot, and snare cross stick. You can change these individually. They each have a separate MIDI note assignment and you can learn each of those, as we saw before, using your drum pad or keyboard, as well as being able to change their volumes individually. Just like the bass drum, these can persist over changes to which kit piece is selected for the snare slot. Now a snare that you want is loaded. Over here we've got the controls again for the mics, and that is all specific to the currently selected instrument. The bass drum has still got the room mic at the position we set earlier, and the close mic, at the position we set earlier, as well as the decay and tuning settings. The snare can have something completely different if we want here. Maybe we want loads of overhead for this. Now we can just turn it up there. If we click back to the bass drum, it's still got its own settings. So this is a really easy way to do some really detailed mic adjustments for the instruments in the kit. You might think, well, but I just want to set them all to the same thing, and of course you might. So we've included some link buttons to make this happen. If I turn on link, 
these controls will affect all the instruments in the kit at once. So I've turned on link, and let's say I want to turn the volume of the overheads all the way down to zero, and the decay for the overheads all the way down to zero too. If I click back to the bass drum now, you'll see those are set to the same value, and also are the same on every other instrument. Now that I've linked these overheads, they're the same for all instruments. So this means it's easy to make both specific individual adjustments and to affect everything globally by turning link on or off. There's a couple more things to show you on this page. The first is a control that is unique to the toms. Each tom has a resonance control. You can see that it's only active when a tom is selected. Tom resonance provides a natural sounding decay of the resonating tom drum skin, even if you're using a really short decay on the microphones for the toms. It's a great little feature and this is how it works. Suppose we've turned the room and overhead microphones all the way down for the selected tom and we've turned the decay all the way down also. We'll get a very short, snappy, dry sound and sometimes that's great but it could also sound a little artificial. So using tom resonance, we can actually add in some resonant head decay that will ring out after the tom is struck, even with these very short and dry settings. And we can do this for each tom individually, which makes it quite powerful and a great tool for maintaining a naturalistic drum sound despite some heavy processing. Finally, on this page, we can audition the sound of each drum directly from the interface without the need for a MIDI controller. I've currently selected this tom, and when I hit the audition button, it will play the sound of that tom. All these sounds play at a fixed velocity of 100. If I select the bass drum, it will play the sound of the bass drum. If we have a multi-articulation instrument, it will cycle through the articulations. This can be very useful when selecting kit pieces. So that's this page done, aside from one last feature accessed here. Sound check mode, which I'll explain in the next section of this video. Sound check mode is unique to Martin France drums, and we believe it's the easiest way to get your MIDI controller talking to the instrument. So, whether your controller is a MIDI keyboard or drum pad instrument, like machine or a full on electronic drum kit, sound check mode will help you assign kit pieces to MIDI notes incredibly quickly and intuitively. Let's open Soundcheck mode and see how it works. Clicking the Soundcheck button immediately hides everything else on the interface and shows this nice big display that's easy to read when you're sitting across the room behind your e-drum kit or in any situation. The display shows us the name of the articulation that will be assigned to the next note you play. So if it is the bass drum, which is the start of the assigning sequence in Soundcheck mode, when you hit a pad on your drum pad instrument or the bass drum of your e-drums, or a specific MIDI note on your keyboard that will be assigned to a bass drum in Martin France drums. When you hit a pad on your drum pad instrument, or the bass drum of your e-drums, or a specific MIDI note on your keyboard, that will be assigned to the bass drum in Martin France drums. I'm going to play a note, and having done that, sound check mode advances to the next available articulation, which is the snare center. So if you're behind your kit, you can hit the center of the snare and that will be assigned like this. It then advances and prompts you to assign the rim shot. So you can then hit the rim shot on your kit or controller or just the MIDI key that you want it to be assigned to and that's assigned. It's the same for snare cross stick and then for toms number one, two, then the floor tom. We then move on to the symbols. We've got articulations for hat tip, open hats, shank and the pedal with lots more coming in a new update of Martin France drums actually. So all you have to do sitting behind your kit is play the articulation that's shown on the screen. If you're working with a drum pad instrument, you just hit the pad that you want to assign to the articulation that soundcheck mode is showing you. It'll proceed through the hats and then onto the different articulations of each of the ride and crash symbols. We've got bow, edge and bell for ride one and then the same again for ride two and finally, the same three again for the crash symbol. Once you assign the final articulation, crash bell, soundcheck mode will now display done and you can now just carry on playing as normal 
or exit soundcheck mode. However, maybe you made a mistake or changed your mind, so you can use these big chunky buttons here to go backwards and reassign one articulation or more. If maybe you don't have enough pads to map all the articulations, you can skip an articulation as well by using this button. So, if you just want to go in and change the mapping for the crash symbol in particular, you can skip all the rest and advance with the crash articulations, then assign those. This might just be easier with a single articulation to do in performance page though. Once you finish, or at any time in the process, you can just hit this close button and it takes you back to the performance page and everything you've assigned is remembered. I've taken you through this very slowly to show how it works, but this is actually incredibly fast once you're familiar with it, because you can just hit sound check and then literally just play every note that you want to assign, just like this. And you've mapped the whole instrument in a matter of seconds. The second page of Martin France drums is the mixer page, and it's here that you can perform balancing of microphone channels, set pan controls, and also set reverb level sends from each channel, like an analog mixing console. It's important to note that this is in addition to the level and decay controls on the performance page. We saw on the performance page how you could set the close overhead and room mic levels for each drum in the kit. That is in addition to what we can do on the mixer page. Here we are looking at changing channels that can have multiple drums sounding through them. This split system can be incredibly powerful, but if you want you can keep it really simple and just use the mixing page to set your levels. So, if you want to do some really intricate adjustments, you can do it per drum on the performance page and then use the mixer as well for more general balancing. Alternatively, you can leave the levels at their default on the performance page and work with a simple mixer like you would with a physical mixing console. So, let's see how the mixing page works. We've got channel strips, each of which is numbered and corresponds to a mic group. Over here is the kick out mic channel. Channel number one, moving all the way up to channel 13, which is the crash mic channel, and this is referring to the crash close microphone, not the crash symbol. We can see the levels in real time as we play, thanks to the level meters. So if I play some notes now, you can see that these level meters animate as I'm playing. It's a good way of getting a sense of where the levels are at. For each channel, we've got a number of different controls. The most important one is the volume control, which is this fader that I can move up and down to increase and decrease the volume of that channel. Here we have a phase inversion button, which we can turn on and off for that individual mic channel. Up here, we've got a pan control that determines the stereo position of the current mic. And you'll notice that two of these channels, the overheads and rooms, don't have those pan controls. That's intentional because they are stereo mic arrays. Down at the bottom, we have a mute control for the specified channel and we've also got a solo button. Solo overrides mutes, and so it greys out the mute button if it is active for any channel. We've also got a couple of more specific controls over here. Firstly, a kick high pass filter. This is set by default to shave some lows off, as so the bass energy of these kick drums is huge. If you want to hear the full bass range of the drum, try dialing it to zero. But if you want to focus the up the energy a little higher in the frequency range, you can turn this up and it's just going to filter off some of the extreme low end. Here we have another dial that adds a high end boost to the snare top mic channel only. The snares were mainly mic'd with a very natural sounding ribbon microphone, which may sound quite different to the bright snappy snare EQ'd sound that many people are used to. This control will add back in some of that familiar bite if you want. This page also has some reverb sends on each mic channel, and with these you can determine the amount of level that each mic channel sends to the global reverb. Alongside those reverb send dials, you've got a lock control. The lock control is slightly difficult to get your head around, but once you've understood how it works, you'll find it is very, very helpful when you're experimenting with different sounds in Martin France drums. This is how it works. 
If I choose the designed kit preset, that's going to reset the mixer. And that's so the designed kit sounds as it was intended to be. However, you may have configured reverb sends to specific levels that you want to keep. So if you turn on reverb lock when you load a design preset, the send levels will stay as you set them. Let's see how it works. If I turn lock off and I load breakbeat 1, we can see that the kit has loaded, the mixer has been reset, and these reverb sends are reset to the values stored in the preset. Now let's say we want to add some reverb on these channels, and we want that to persist when we change the preset. So we can hit lock. Lock is now on, and if we come back to the performance page and we load breakbeat 1, we can see that on the mixer page, even though we loaded a preset, those reverb levels are locked and they are staying exactly where we put them. So as you start to become a power user of Martin France drums, you'll find this is a very helpful way of setting reverbs up, just as you like them, and then locking them in place when you load different presets. We can also manually reset the whole mix page using the reset mixer button down here. That will reset the volume faders and reset the mute and solo buttons. It will change everything back to its default state. As you saw there, it will also turn off lock. So when you do it manually with the reset mixer button, everything will definitely be reset. And that's why we've included reverb lock, just in case you don't want presets to override your settings. The third page of Martin France drums is the effects page. And this is where you can apply effects to the whole kit as well as determining the type of reverb that we sent to from specific mic channels on the mixer page. Let's start with the presets menu. In here we have several effects presets and each of these will load a specific selection of settings. For each of the presets that you see in this list, there's one that corresponds to every one of the design kit presets on the performance page. And there's also several more besides. For example, if I load the preset drums next door, you'll see that it changes multiple controls and has created an entire effects chain. We can get back to the default states by choosing the default preset in this list, or we can use the reset effects button down here, and that's put everything back to its starting state. Let's look at the individual elements in this effects rack. We have compression, which shapes the dynamic response of the sound. It has an amount dial to determine how much compression is taking place. A mix dial, where you can mix the compressed sound and uncompressed sound together in a method known as parallel compression. Finally, there's a makeup gain dial, which boosts the volume after compression has taken place. Down at the bottom in the middle of the page is a compression style menu, which changes multiple things under the hood to give you quick access to different types of compression that are all voiced for drum processing. So for example, classic punch, hard slam, and even something that we're calling the safe option, are available there. These are based on experience of mixing drums, and it means it is very easy to dial in useful compression settings. Next, we've got tape saturation. That's a tape-like distortion effect. You can turn it on with a button on the top, and you can increase the amount of drive using this dial, as well as controlling the warmth characteristics of the saturation using this dial. After tape saturation is the transient control, and this is extraordinarily powerful for shaping the sound of the drums. It is a little like a compressor, but one that separates out the attack portion of the sound from the sustain. So the attack is the first part of the sound that you hear, and the sustain is the tail. Using the transient control, you can change the volume of those parts of the sound independently. So if you turn up the attack, that's going to increase the volume of the initial snap of the sound. Or if we turn up the sustain, that will increase the sound of the tail. For instance, with snare drum, we might turn up the sustain in order to accentuate the rattle of the snares. If you want to soften the sound of the whole kit, we might leave the sustain in its neutral position, and then reduce the attack. So transient really lets you transform the whole sound of the kit. After the transient processor, is distortion. This is a different kind of distortion to tape saturation, much more extreme. You have an amount dial to increase the amount of distortion and an output dial to set the volume level 
after the distortion has been applied. Then there is the reverb section. In the reverb section, we can determine the sound of the reverb. Back on the mixer page, we can determine how much of that reverb sound is sent from individual mic channels to the global reverb. Let's see what we can do with this on the effects page. We can turn the reverb on and off using this button, and we can also set the amount of pre-delay, which is the delay between the dry sound and the reverb starting. We can also change the length of the reverb from very short to its natural position at zero up to very long. Down in the bottom left, you can choose the type of reverb. We've included a large number of different sampled reverbs, from rare vintage hardware, through to some strange digital contraptions, and some sound design verbs, such as caverns and water towers. You can set the reverb type here, and you can come back to the mix page and use these dials to determine how much of the reverb that you've set and sent from individual mic channels back on the effects page. We've also got two controls that affect the tone of the sound globally. The first is the bright button, and this applies a convolution impulse response of a classic tube EQ, often used to brighten drums in the mix. You'll find this provides an airy lift to the sound and brings it forward in the mix. This is a straightforward on-off button. In addition to the bright control, and separate from it, is an equalizer. The equalizer changes the volume of different frequencies and we've set the frequencies to ones that are classically used for shaping drum sounds in the mix. These dials determine the volume of the frequencies. And you have low, low mid, high mid, and high. These dials will raise or lower the volume of each of these frequency bands. Finally, in this section, we have the pre-post button. When the EQ is set pre, that means it is before the compressor before the tape saturator, before the transient shaper, and so on. And if it's post, that means it comes after. That can be very useful if the distortion, for example, has changed the tone a lot, and then you want to use the equalizer after the distortion to take some off the high end. This can also be very useful for pre-shaping the sound into different units, i.e. removing bottom into the distortion, so there's less buzzing and more general crunch, or damping, boosting, post-processing, to shape the sound without impacting compression or other frequency dependent processes. Finally then, we can put everything back to their default state by hitting the reset effects button here. The final page of Martin France drums is the tweak page, and you probably won't need to visit this page very often. It's got two controls on it, one for the voice usage engine and one for the velocity curve. We'll start with the velocity curve. This determines the global response of Martin France drums to MIDI velocity. So that's how hard you hit the drum pad or your E-kit or your MIDI keyboard. If you change this to a positive value, it becomes easier to create high velocities. That means you don't need to hit your controller as hard in order to reach a high velocity. If you change it into a negative value, it becomes easier to achieve quiet velocities. So you don't need to hit it softly in order to trigger quiet velocities. You'll probably only need to use this if you're used to a particular velocity response from your MIDI controller from the virtual instruments that you generally use, and you want to bring Martin France drums into line with this kind of velocity response that you expect. Over on the left is the voice usage engine, and this essentially controls polyphony. Martin France drums plays a large number of simultaneous voices for each drum and for each mic, and the voice usage engine manages these voices so that they don't overrun. By default, it's set to full, which means that you can absolutely punish it with very intense playing and lots of drums of cymbals simultaneously, and it will still sound natural. If you find that your computer is not quite powerful enough to stream the number of voices simultaneously, you may want to work with light or economy mode. These modes slightly reduce the polyphony in very, very busy passages. The instrument does it intelligently in such a way that 99% of the time you'll never notice. However, if you find your computer is struggling in full mode, try one of these other modes. It is very important to note that you shouldn't adjust the max voices value in the contact instrument, as our voice engine takes charge of that, and it will reduce the number of running voices depending on the mode you set here. So don't try and change the number of voices using this 
because it will cause our voice engine to stop working correctly. So that's it, that's the tour of Martin France drums. We hope you enjoy playing it and let us know any of your comments via our website www.rattlyandraw.com if you have any questions. Many thanks for watching. <laughs>